this video we're going to look at the S Plan heating system, how to wire one up and what the controls do and I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible. Okay, hope you enjoy it. So an S Plan heating system allows you to have independent control over your heating in hot water, what time it comes on and what temperature it gets to. To enable us to have heating in hot water when we want it, we just have a series of switches to control that. Now these switches either switch something on or off, they ask a question or they open or close. Let's have a look at each individual component. So right at the very beginning of the chain we have the power supply which is generally a fuse spur with the 3 amp fuse in it. It's only 3 amps because there's no large loads. We're not using electricity to heat the water. It's only for switching. It's powering the clock, it's powering the motor in the valve, in the motor in the pump, in various electrical components in the boiler. So that's all it's for. So we can isolate from here, switch on or off. So that's where it starts. It starts with the power. Next we have the programmer and all that has to do is say, is it time for the hot water heating to be switched on? That's all it does. Next in the chain we have the thermostats. And we have two of these on an s plan system. One measures the temperature of the water and one measures the temperature of the room. So that's what their job is. In the chain we have the two pot valves and again we have two of these, one for hot water, one for heating. And these control the flow of the actual hot water around the system through the pipe work to your heating in hot water. And right at the very end of the chain we have the boiler and pump. Obviously the boiler heats the water, the pump drives the water through the pipe work to your radiators, to your hot water. And that's the switching to actually make this happen. All these various elements, all they're there for is to switch this boiler on or off. We don't want to be waiting for the hot water to heat up. We want it there when we need it. So we have a tank, we have a storage of hot water and this is what these controls enable. They enable this tank to remain nice and warm so we've got hot water when we need it. So I don't want to waste energy. You don't want the boiler constantly firing up, constantly heating the water. It'd be a waste of energy and resources. So this is why we have it controlled. The timer, the programmer, actually says do I actually want heating at this time? If you do, it asks the thermostat does it actually need to be heated? It measures the temperature of the water. The water's at 60 degrees or whatever it's set at. It's saying, no, I don't. It won't switch the boiler on. But if the temperature in the tank drops, it'll switch it on and heat the tank up until it reaches 60. Then it'll switch the supply back off again. So you've constantly got a supply of hot water in your tank and it's there when you need it. If you're central heating, you want good control over that. There's no point heating your house if there's nobody there. So this is what your programmer does. You set it to what time you want it to come on. In this case, it's between 7 and 10 in the morning and 4.30 and 10 at night. If it's between that time, it'll send a signal to the thermostat and ask the thermostat what temperature is it. And if the thermostat says, well, it's at 22, well, that's fine. That's what I want. It won't ask the boiler to come on. But if the temperature in the room drops, it'll the thermostat will kick in, send a signal onto the two-port valve and the boiler, and that's for the heating to be switched on. And that'll circulate heat through the central heating system, through your radiators, and warm the room up. And once the room reaches a setting on the thermostat, it'll say, right, I'm satisfied now, and it'll switch off the boiler. So there you go, you've got good control of your heating, and you're not wasting any money unnecessarily. So let's have a look at the wiring of an S plan. It's nothing to worry about, really. People do get concerned, thinking it's too complex. But when you strip it down, it's really very, very simple. So this is just the live connections. I've left the neutrals and CPCs off just for clarity. But they'll be in a further drawing later down the line because obviously they're very important. So one starts up at the MCB in the fuse board. That's where the power comes into the fuse spur. And this all is just is there to isolate the system, switch power on off to the system. And it also fuses it down to three amps because nothing uses a large amount of current. So it doesn't need to be a big supply. Three amps will be fine for the heating system. So from the fuse spur, we follow the power. That goes to the programmer. And the programmer just sits there and waits for commands. Do you want the hot water to come on? Is it time to come on? Is the heating time to come on? If it is, all it does, closes the switch and sends on the signal. So in the case of the hot water, do you want the hot water on? Yes, I do. It'll send the feed to the tank thermostat. The tank thermostat will go, is it 60 degrees or not? If it's colder, it says I need heating up. So it'll send the feed on 
to the two port valve. The two port valve are then motor, this motor will rotate and as the motor turns around press the little micro switch which joins the permanent life feed in the two port valve to the switch feed and this switch feed goes off to the boiler and pump and energizes it. So let's go through that again with the heating. We have the live in. Do we want heating? Yes we do. Is it cold enough for the heating to come on? Yes it is. So the signal goes on. The live goes to the motor, switches the motor at the two port valve on. The motor spins round. A little button on the motor then nudges in this micro switch and makes this connection here from the permanent live coming into the two port valve and the switch connection out to the boiler and pump and the connection is made. So that's a, that's what it is. It's as simple as that. That is the wiring for the S plan system. Look at the actual two port valve. Two port valve has a cable. Within that cable it's got five conductors and each conductor is a colour and each conductor has got a particular job. This is always hard wired in. You don't wire this two port valve yourself. This comes with connections already made so you know that the particular colours do a particular function. The function of the brown wire, remember, this is what connects to the feed from the thermostat. So if the thermostat is calling for heat, it sends a signal down this brown wire. And all this brown wire does is energise the motor. With the neutral, the motor can then turn round. So the motor turns round, a little lug on the motor, which pushes in this micro switch. And it connects two cables together. One of the cables is the grey cable. The grey cable coming into the two port valve is just permanently alive. There's no switching on that. That is just a permanent live feed that comes into the motor. So the grey cable is permanently live. The orange cable is the actual switching cable. This is what sends this power on to the boiler. So this is your switch live feed out of the two port valve. And to make this live, it has to connect with the grey because this is the permanent live. So the motor turns round, slowly turns round, pushes this little micro switch in, nudges it, and it makes this connection here. So the permanent live in is sent on to the orange wire, which fires the boiler. So that it, it, that's it. That's your two-port valve. It's as simple as that. Live comes in, the brown comes in, turns the motor, motor nudges a micro switch, which makes a connection between the permanent live and the switch live to enable the heating or hot water to come on. That's it, that's your two port valve, simple as that. This is the CPC is the last conductor, that's your protective conductor. That's it, that's that your valve. two port valve. We know better how that works now. We know that each conductor has a particular job. It's hard wired like that. So the brown wire, the grey wire, the orange wire, they all have a particular function, a particular job to do. So don't forget, it's just a bunch of switches. And some switches ask a question. So from the fuse board, we get power to the isolator, the 3 amp fuse, the 3 amp spur. That goes onto the programmer. The programmer says, is it time for the hot water or heating to come on? If it is, closes the switch. It'll send the power on to the room stat. The room stat will go, oh, is it warm enough in here or is it too cold? If it's too cold, it'll close the switch, which will send the signal, which will connect to the brown wire and the two port valve. The brown wire and the two port valve operates the motor. The motor turns round, nudges a little micro switch, which connects the grey wire, which is a permanent live feed, into the two port valve, to the orange wire, which is the switched output, which goes on to switch the boiler on. So that's how it works for both the heating and hot water. If this is calling, it switches the motor, the motor turns round, nudges the switch, makes the connection, and onto the boiler. And that is it. That's the S plan. So this is the S plan with all the conductors in apart from the CPCs and yeah it starts to look a little bit complex but as we know it's not really it's just a series of switches and you look at, look at each section logically you can see what it's doing so it, it's not that complex not that complex when you see it in a nice kind of organized drawing like this but when you turn up on site and uh, you, 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 you're going to see something slightly different Let's have a look at that. One of the reasons people get a bit concerned, they're worried about doing central heating wiring is because of messes like this. You might have seen inside a wiring sender and you just have this jumble. You're not quite sure what's doing what and all the different coloured conductors. Ah, oh, it's, it's where do you start? And this also you get some very 
dangerous and incorrect wiring as well. You often see CPCs used as live conductors. You should never do that. Even if you sleeve it brown, you should never use the CPC as a live conductor because the risk is that someone is going to connect the CPC to a live terminal and that could be potentially very dangerous. You've also got the idea of neutrals as well. But these might not be neutrals. There might be switch life feeds, but they haven't been switched. And you don't want to be putting a switch life feed onto the neutral. Not with an expensive boiler. That can cause all kinds of bother. So you have to be careful. Make sure you do all the wiring correctly. Sleeve the conductors so people know that they're live conductors. Don't use the CPCs as live conductors. And if you're looking at somebody else's work, you've just got to take your time. This is why the two-port valve is your friend if you're looking at wiring centres and you're not sure what's what. Because the wiring from a two-port valve is hardwired at the factory. Each conductor has a definitive job in the two-port valve. We know that the blue is the neutral, the brown is the power to the motor, the grey is a permanent live, the orange is a switch output, and the green and yellow is a protective conductor, the CPC. And that can help us in wiring centres because we can use... Say, for example, we could follow the orange wire. We know that the orange wire will have to switch output from the two-port valve, which has to connect to the boiler. And then, yeah, we can follow that, yeah. That, so that conductor's got in the boiler. So it can help you work out what's doing what. We know what's going on. We know, not, we know what needs to come into the wiring centre. We know we need the power. We know we need the clock and the two stats, the two valves in the feed to the boiler. So we can slowly start to work it out. Um, so, But you do need to take good care because, like I said, sometimes electricians might use incorrect colours and not sleeve conductors and that can cause bother. You don't be putting neutrals and lives together cause expensive damage to the boiler. So like I say, knowing the, the colours of the two-port valves and what to do can really help you. Get an idea of what's going on in the wiring centre. Well, you've seen the simplified versions. I hope this starts to make some sense. It starts a little bit complicated and a bit, oh, what's going on? But if you're just logical, you'll get there. So we have the permanent lives. The pump has a permanent life. The clock, the two port valves of their career connected to the permanent life. So they're the permanent lives. They're coming together. The neutrals to the two port valves, the boiler pump and clock. They're all coming together. The rest is just switching. You just go through them logically. You have the heating connection. Heating. That is connected to the room thermostat. So you have a connection there. If this is column for heat, it sends power on to the stat. The stat's column for heat. It'll close that connection. It'll send the feed on to the two-part valve. Two-part valve will do its thing. It'll turn around, switch this switch on. Connect the permanent live and the switch live, which will go to this connection in the wiring centre, which is connected to the boiler. And the exact same thing happens for the hot water. The hot water is connected to the hot water tank thermostat. And when that's calling for heat, it'll put the power onto the disconnect conductor, which will go to the brown wire for the hot water two pot valve. Again, the motor will turn. Make this connection here between a permanent live and a switch live. Switch live goes to this connection, comes around and switches the pump and boiler on. So there you go, that's your S plan. So there we are, that's the basic overview of the S plan. But like I say, this is just a generic S plan system, and certain systems might have specific requests, especially the boiler. The boiler is often not just switched on or off. You have a different phase of the boiler. You'll have a permanent live and a switch live. That's because boilers also like to have the pump running after the boiler is switched off. The reason for that is it's called pump overrun. And the pump keeps on going after the boiler is switched off to get rid of the heat from the boiler. So you've always got to look at the instructions for your boiler and see how the final connection to that boiler is. So that's your genetic S-plan. I hope you found it useful. And thanks for watching.